Hello and welcome back to Wall Street Training's complex leverage buyout modeling course. At this point, because we're doing a full LBO, in this scenario, we're going to buy 100% of our stock, 100% equity repurchase. And as we have mentioned before, yes, I will refinance every one of these numbers, also 1% transaction fee. So please make sure that now I'll give you 5, 10 seconds, column V, W, and X. Your numbers match my numbers here. These are very important as they will drive the entire model going forward and dictate what we will do. Okay, as we had mentioned, when you borrow new debt, you have to pay fees and these fees get amortized. But we need to amortize it over the loan, over the life of the, of the note or of the security. So in cell Y18, let's put in the term of each one of these items. In Y18, 5, 6, 7, and 10. We're basically assuming this is a five-year revolver. Revolvers are usually one to two years. However, for purposes of this model, well, not just this model, in reality, LBOs, revolvers, usually will have a five-year term or somewhere around there. We're going to assume our term loans have a six-year term. This is going to assume, in our case, you'll see when we get to our debt sweep, a pro rata principal amortization. Just on real quick on deal structure here or in the different types, you might have a term loan A, B, and C. Each one of these, A is most senior, B is less, and C is the least senior. This might have a greater amortization schedule, meaning you have to prepay, or not re prepay, but repay your, your principal faster. This might be something like pro rata. Then term loan B, a little bit less senior, so further down the scale, might have something like a lesser amortization, like you have to pay less of your principal back every year, and, column, and term loan C might be something like, I don't know, one or five percent, whatever, principal amortization each year, and this more reflects a bullet payment now. But these are technically still bank debt, not bonds. These are bank debt, okay? And we will assume that our sub-debt has a 10-year period. So, what we, now to now, uh, excuse me, what we now need to do is say, hey, listen, we got to refinance whatever this dollar amount is, and we have to apply a term to it. But we don't yet know uh, oh, sorry, we got to multiply and figure out what the financing fees are in column Z, and then we got to amortize that down. Well, we don't yet know, we haven't yet told Excel which one of these deal structures, the no transaction, the, the, uh, the second scenario, which is the no refinance versus the yes refinance, we haven't yet told Excel which one of those we want to use. So why don't we go ahead now and tell Excel which one of those we want to use. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to zoom out a little bit so you can see what I'm doing. And I want you to go to column R. Column R is where you are going to put in for me a bunch of choose formulas. These choose formulas are what you will tell Excel. Bring in the correct column, those three columns, and bring them in based on my refinancing switch on top. Again, what is controlling what these are going to do? That would be this number here. Refinancing case, that will control it. And remember, in a status quo, we always want to force the status quo to have transaction one. So you can never, ever put one in AB. That would just simply not work. You cannot put a two or three in the no transaction either. That also will not work. Why? Because this says do nothing, raise no new debt. So if you do anything there, you will blow up your model. Similarly, here, if you say do nothing, that won't work because you won't have enough debt to pay or to borrow. Therefore, you gotta be very careful. That's again, these two numbers here will wrap into and dictate what is actually going to be in column W over here. Uh, sorry, over here, W3. Got it? So why don't we go ahead and do that now? Let's put in our choose formulas, and I want you to go to R18, and here I'm going to zoom in for you so you can see. R18, you will say equals choose, open paren, please follow my anchoring, and you're going to get yourself to W3, and you're going to hit F4 function key. So this tells you, I want the second scenario here. So you're going to say comma, right arrow to V18, comma, W18, comma, X18, hit enter. Here's your formula here once again.
let's go ahead and do the next cell. We're going to copy this, R18. We're going to copy it, shift down to subdeck R21, Alt E S F formulas, enter. Don't hit escape yet because we're not going to we're, we're going to want to copy the formulas. We're not going to we're not we don't want to mess up the formatting. Go down to R23 and hit the F4 function key, which redoes the last action as we did previously. And then go to R25 through 29 and hit F4 again for me there. And you're going to get your correct percentages grabbed in appropriately. Now what I want to do is as follows. Let's actually figure out our fees that we have to pay. So I'm going to zoom out a bit so you can see the totality of everything. And then I will go ahead and zoom in when I create the formula. Let me summarize what we just did here. And uh, I know this is a little bit tough to see, but you can look at your Excel as well. First of all, once again, let me re reiterate. We calculated and inputted our transaction structure based on our refinancing scenarios. Recall that in the no transaction, we wanted this to be zero because we want to do nothing. Raise no new debt. And no refi. Under no finance, we say yes, buy back 100%, raise the additional new debt there, and since we said no refi, zeros. Under refinance all, we said, hey, buy back 100% of our stock, a higher refinancing amount, yes, refinance existing debt. That's what our current deal structure says. Now, these are our options and our switches. We have not yet told Excel which one of these scenarios we want to, which actually we did tell Excel which scenario to use, case two, but we didn't tell Excel how to grab it in. So this column R over here, this column R tells us that we will go ahead and grab, based on that cell uh, W3, our switch in W3, our refinancing scenario, choose which one of these three options. That's what we did here. Now we're going to turn that back around and we're going to say the following. Well, we got to pay fees. How much fees? Well, how much are we actually borrowing? Raising new debt. We are going to borrow and raise this amount of new debt. That's highlighted in yellow on your screen. That was your column R. We're going to take those numbers and we're going to say take those dollars, multiply it, also now being highlighted on your screen, column U, the fees. Again, we will take the dollars that we actually raised in column R, multiply by the fees percentage that we will raise, that we will have to pay in column U, so take those numbers times those numbers. That's the fees that we have to pay for that tranche, for this LBO. As you update cell W3, these numbers in column R will update and the fees will update. Because, once again, due to the matching principle, the matching principle says what? Amortize the fees, recognize the fees, uh, the expenses in a time period used to generate the revenue. So you must amortize the dollar amount of fees in column Z into column AA, and this will give us, if you divide by our term, we will amortize it over, pro rata, over the life of those particular notes. So that is what we will now calculate. We won't, by the way, yet do our tender costs. We won't do our tender costs yet until we have finished our sources and uses. We'll come back to that because we don't know the dollar amount that we will yet use. So we'll come back to that later. So that's what we are now going to do when I'm highlighting here now, column Z and double A, that's the logic on how this works. Okay. So let's go ahead and build that in right now. So I'm going to go to Z18. I'm going to, say, I'm going to blow this up. And the fees that I will pay is simply going to be equals left arrow to R times my fees in column U. I will have to pay a total of $8. $8 million of fees for this revolver, the right or the ability to borrow up until a $1.5 billion on my revolver. Guess what we're going to do now? We're going to take this and we're going to copy paste it as a formula down to the next few cells. Yes, you could do a control D, but you'll mess up my formatting. So what I want you to do is select uh, Z18, this eight bucks. Then shift down to Z18 through Z21, Alt ESF for formulas, enter escape, and now you've got the total fees that you have to pay per tranche of debt, the new debt that you have raised. And in Z22, I'm going to do Alt equals. This will be the total debt financing fees you gotta pay, 75 million bucks 